What's going on? Brian Tong here, and we're back with your Googlelicious for everything inside the world of Google. We've been gone for a while between my vacation and everything else, but we're back and packed with stories. Now, last week, Google's parent company, Alphabet, announced record revenues and profits thanks to increased ad sales and a stronger control on costs, resulting in the stock price going bonkers. So now, during their earnings, they talked about their increased investments in machine learning and artificial intelligence. A Bloomberg report says a very large fraction of the millions of queries a second that people like us are searching for are being interpreted by an AI system by Google nicknamed RankBrain. 15% of all searches it receives have never been seen before, and RankBrain makes a guess at what words or phrases might have a similar meaning and filters the results to make it more effective in handling these never-before-seen searches. Now, Google search engineers were even asked to eyeball some pages and guess which one they thought Google search engine tech would rank on top. The humans guessed right 70% of the time, while Rank Brain had an 80% success rate. Now, you guys can check out the Bloomberg article. It's really interesting stuff. And if you're thinking this out loud, the answer is yes. You and I will eventually both be replaced by machines. Now, machines are already doing more things for us, and Google's driverless cars are another example of what's coming. The Googs continues to reiterate that they aren't looking to make this a commercial product just yet, and that might happen around 2020. But Larry Burns, one of Google's consultants and GM's former chief technology officer, says Google's tech could be ready in less than three years. Now, a new patent published by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office revealed a proposed Google in-car tool which uses your own wearable device's movements to figure out if you're the driver or the passenger of the car. Now, people are still driving and texting or checking the web or a whole bunch of other distracting, dangerous things, but Google's system could theoretically detect who is the driver and disable certain functions on their mobile phone or other devices. This is not a real product yet, and the idea behind it is all obviously about safety, but it's also sometimes just another reason for people who aren't buying a wearable right now to still not buy one. All right, tablets are getting bigger and bigger these days. And you know who else wants in on that? Samsung. Now, a Sam Mobile report reveals that Samsung is working on an 18.4 inch tablet called the Samsung View that can double up as a mini TV for the streaming age. 18.4 inches, people. Now, it's reported to have a 1920 by 1080 resolution with the Exynos 7580 64-bit octa-core processor and will launch in the U.S. with a price tag of $599, but no release date has been given yet. There's also this nifty-looking handle on the backside because it's as big, if not bigger, than a briefcase. Okay, Samsung Pay is also finally available to Verizon users in the U.S. with a Galaxy S6. Edge, Edge Plus, or Note 5 after a long period of uncertainty. Its main advantage is really the ability to use it with old magnetic card base readers as well. And HTC released their latest flagship phone with the HTC One A9. And I think it's pretty obvious what design they might have borrowed from or just blatantly copied. Like, seriously, HTC, this is just bad. But Jack Tong, president of HTC North Asia, who has no relationship to me whatsoever, fired back at critics by saying, we're not copying. We made a unibody metal clad phone in 2013. It's Apple that copies us in terms of antenna design on the back. And Jack makes a point. I had the original ACC one and it was the first unibody metal design. But then you guys had to make yours look almost exactly like the iPhone 6 and 6S. You aren't tricking anyone here. And remember, ACC had that ad campaign called Here's to Change. So HTC stands for? Humongous Tinfoil Catamaran. Great. It's the drunk car wash. They love it. High tea catapult. Almost hot tea catapult. Hold this cat. HTC, here's to change. But now, HTC stands for how to copy. And in the most pressing issue surrounding Android, fans are freaking out. After Apple just pushed out its recent iOS update that supports Unicode 7 and 8 and the new emojis. So Hiroshi Lockheimer, the new senior VP of Android, sent out a tweet reassuring users that the Android team is on it after Reddit users complained about them trailing others in the emoji game. There's no date when you'll be getting the new taco, burrito, or middle finger emojis, but it might be a few more months, and I know that really hurts some of you, but you'll have to deal with it in I know you can make it through this together. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.